Hey everybody, Jamie here coming to you from the windy desert of Arizona with a special treat. I recently caught up with a couple that built a school bus into a camper. Now they picked this school bus up for $4,500, very attainable. In over four years, put a total of 38,000 into it by, in very creative ways, making some very cool things happen. If this is the kind of content that you're interested in, I would ask you to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification because there's a whole lot more where that came from. Also, my patrons, I really appreciate you guys. You keep me going out here and it really means a lot to me. If you were in the area and you built out your own rig and you'd be interested in giving a tour and talking about what you did and how you put everything together, send me an email at enigmaticnomadics at gmail.com. In the meantime, let's ch 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 check it out. Have lots of conversations about ideas. <laughs> Write them down. See how she's looking at me? Floor she's plan. Like, so she's looking Write at me. them down. <laughs>I present you, Donna and Paul. We met recently from an inquiry I made on one of my videos that if you were in the area, I'd come by and uh, I'd want to interview them for you guys. And so here we are, and I just took a look at their rig and it's just absolutely amazing. It knocks my socks off. Let's start with, before we get to the rig, was you guys at one point lived, we'll say, a conventional lifestyle. You had jobs, you live in a house, the thought of moving into a school bus and building it out wasn't even on the radar. Yeah. What happened from where you were to us sitting here now? What was the thought <laughs> process? <laughs> Boy, a lot's happened in a short period of time, it seems like, uh, Jamie, for one thing, but you're absolutely right. We, we had a house. Uh, and uh, I think we started watching videos on schoolie builds. And uh, I think I might have mentioned something to Donna, like, wow, isn't this cool? She immediately jumped on it and said, let's do it, which just, I wasn't ready for that. You know, it's like, be careful what you wish for. So immediately she said, let's, let's get a schoolie. Let's, let's build one out. Well, that was the beginning of, a, of about a four and a half year process of us getting a schoolie and then, uh, like you say, right to where we are now. We had no clue what we'd be, what it would be like, what the, what the lifestyle would be like. Uh, all we knew was what we had seen pretty much on, on videos, like, you know, watching you or, or whatever, just to find out what kind of things can we expect. You don't know until you're here, and we're glad we're here. Yeah. Donna, why was it such an easy sale? <laughs> <laughs> because Vermont winters are long and cold. And I moved there to raise my kids and to start a new life. And once they got old enough, it was time. It was time for me to get out of the cold and to be warm. Yeah, but it's, a school bus, isn't that for ne'er-do-wells that well, sleep on the floor and a sleeping bag? Come on. It's okay with a camper, but once we got talking, Paul really didn't want to go the route of a camper just because the school bus is built a little bit better and different for what we needed. So your first thought was, so we're gonna get a camper, right? Yes. Yeah. And then he said, no, 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 we're gonna we're gonna find a school bus that's been decommissioned. <laughs> yeah, he sold his motorcycle. And, and you know all those pallets out in the back that I've been saving? <laughs> oh, we're gonna yeah. take those pallets, put them in the school bus that's been decommissioned. Yes. And we're gonna live in that. Yes. That was awesome. And we went to Connecticut to get Paul has a history of really good ideas. And so you're like, man, he's on a roll. I've got a well, history of ideas. Ideas. Lots of great ideas. Yeah. But it's basically both of us yeah. together. We, yeah. we like the idea of a school bus. The more we looked into it and saw how solidly they were built and how they're really built to keep kids safe. That's right. uh, I mean, most, most uh, school buses, they don't put their kids in safety belts. They're made to roll over and not crush. I mean, they've got a truck engine, a truck transmission. They're pretty solid and make a, make a great platform for a custom build. Tell me about your background. But yeah, I've just always worked nine to five jobs from ski molding uh, for Rosinell to working in grocery stores. I had a long career uh, at IBM. Uh, I was self-employed for uh, 15 years in a window cleaning and power washing business that I was able to sell to my employees. And then my last job was more or less, what am I gonna do with myself? And a job as a, uh, a custodian, a janitor, or facilities maintenance uh, person at a local elementary school came up. 
same school that uh, her kids uh, went yeah. to school at. And uh, it was the best job I ever had. The kids were great, the teachers were great. I had a lot of support from the staff and uh, I miss it. I miss that that and the people that I used to work with and especially the, the young kids were so sweet. They really were so great. It seems like a really low stress job to me. I'm all about low stress, Jamie. I really am. I've done the stressful things. I just find that uh, it isn't always worth it, you know, to, to uh, put yourself in a position. It takes a toll on your health. It, it, uh, when you, I'm the kind of person that if I leave a job and it's stressful, I take the job with me. I can't just sort of close the doors on it. So yeah, I've been careful to try to uh, pick that kind of a lifestyle for myself, uh, for my own well-being and for the well-being of, uh, of my family. Uh, it just works out better that way. Yeah. But you're right. That's just the, a better direction for me. Donna, Paul was mentioning that you have had part-time jobs. You want to talk a little bit about that? Because, you know, folks watching this want to know you're a regular person. I am a regular person. <laughs> I've worked my entire life. Yeah. I've had office jobs uh, before I moved to, Ver to Vermont and had a lot of different jobs in an office, all different environments. Moved up north, became a stay-at-home mom, raised my kids, grew vegetables, had a huge uh, garden, had a roadside stand. I ended up cooking at restaurants up there and then started serving just a couple nights a week, extra money, raising my kids. And then I found a job at a private label cosmetic company, worked there for 15 years. The company treated me well, but I hated being inside because when I moved from Connecticut to Vermont, that wasn't the plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to leave that stress and that whole lifestyle behind me. So I found myself right back in it. When I was finally able to leave, I was very happy. Mm -hmm. Everything changed in my life and I went back to serving and I love serving. She's a good server. She, it's really a gift of hers. And uh, yeah, she does well at it. So and it's, it's she's where she's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I don't work that hard serving is hard work but you make great money and yeah. i only work as much as i want to yeah and i supported her with my large <laughs> janitorial income uh <laughs> no we just we, we don't have a lot of smart. money we don't have a lot of money we, we don't spend a lot of money right. but you also look pretty happy uh well we work at that yeah. that that's that's uh, work yeah. every day well, in this life it's that work. is uh yeah it, well, it's something you got to be focused on staying staying there yeah it looks like a battle that you're definitely winning yeah thank you that's thank a nice you. way of putting it you're, you're you're just off since june into this lifestyle you've built the rig out yourselves mm -hmm. uh what's what's on the horizon for you have you you left the northeast came out to the southwest which is a, a snowbird destination at one yeah. point quartzite was the the snowbird destination of, of the world. Right. I don't know if it still holds that title, but here we are in yeah. Quartzsite, Arizona. What's next? Have you thought, wow, now we're gonna X, Y, Z. We go back home. We have a little piece of land that he developed into, uh, it's like our own little family campground. So we have three campers on that site and it's along a river, a stream. Yeah, along right, South Wheelock Branch and Wheelock, Vermont. So we kind of live like this in the summer yeah. as well. We live in our yeah. camper on our own property and listening yeah. to the stream and having fires yeah. and family It's a nice times. spot. This year we're just going to take it easy yeah. and kind of learn. Yeah. It's sort of the, the like cautious this. approach yeah. to uh, uh, to boondocking in the desert 101. This is definitely a learning experience for us in our, in our first time doing it. So we're just trying to figure it out. Yeah. I think you're on the right track. How did you guys find this bus? If folks are watching and they think, man, I think I want to do this. Um, oh, how'd you where do I start? Mm -hmm. Oh, we were looking online. We were we were looking online, didn't really know, again, what we were doing, but I found a bus in New Jersey that seemed to check off most of the boxes. It was a little ways away, but it had been undercoated. It had the, the motor that I was looking for, it had a, a DT-466. And uh, the gentleman I bought it from, I asked him, what's the height from the floor to the ceiling? Because I'm, I'm six one and a half and it's like six one. So I've got a half inch of clearance uh, from one side to the other. So it checked the boxes uh, of what I knew to ask at that time. 
Uh, he drove it to us. He wanted to see the area in Vermont that we lived. And uh, so he came up with his uh, girlfriend in a, in a chase car. And he says, all you have to do is just refund me for the fuel costs and for the uh, tolls. I'll drive it to you. So I figured, well, there's my road trip. Now I know if this guy's willing to bring it to me, it's, he's pretty confident in its, in its uh, uh, mechanical ability. So he did. He drove it up. Uh, it pretty much sat all winter. He, he brought it to us right yeah. in the winter. And yeah. uh, next spring, we started with the seat Carrying removal the and all that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a lot of steps. Oh, my God. And, and it did take us, you know, as, as I had mentioned earlier when we were talking, it, it took us about four and a half years of working on it part time here and there. The school I worked for was shut down, uh, as a lot of schools were during that period of time. So I was able to frame out a lot of this, which which really helped. I hired an electrician who uh, was, was just great in being able to figure out where everything went. He really tackled the, the project and got excited about it. That's just the kind of guy I wanted working on this. So nice. he did a great job with the electrical here too. What did you end up with for solar? Uh, we ended up buying uh, three uh, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate uh, batteries. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with those. Their ability to discharge so low and come back so quickly when you recharge them. Uh, pretty happy with that. We got a Xantrex uh, inverter. It's a 2000 watt, which is more than adequate. We, we really try to keep our electrical needs very low using LED lights and trying to be careful about things like our electric coffee maker. Donna was concerned, uh, you know, rightfully so, that we wouldn't have enough electricity to, to live comfortably. <laughs> so we just bought an extra battery. I thought we only needed two, we got yeah. three. Uh, I just told her just anytime you use electricity, realize that there's a there's a cost involved, and if you if you flatten the batteries on one thing, well, that's another thing you won't be able to do. But so far, we've been we've had more than enough. We've got 400 uh, watts. Uh, we have two 200 watt uh, panels on the roof that I made uh, tiltable, and we're parked in such a way that we keep them uh, right by the sun. And of course, we just went through the the uh, winter solstice, so we're at the low point right now and still have not, are not having any problems at all with, uh, with power. So we're pretty grateful there. Have lots of conversations about ideas. <laughs> Write them down. See how she's looking at me? Floor she's plans. Like, so she's looking Write at them me. down. Make sure you know. It's true. Nothing is written in it's stone. True. I everything do have a tendency is... to, to map everything out, plan everything out, <laughs> and I need to include my, uh, my other half here in the process because I tend to... I've been able to design and have five houses built. So I'm pretty good with figuring out where things go and, and dimensions and three-dimensional thinking. But things change when you things build change. a bus. And, and this is probably the things third change. iteration of the, uh, <laughs> of the original floor probably. plan. Probably. And, and yeah. it works great for us. It does. And, and with Donna's input, of course. All right. Let's take a tour. Okay. okay. Sounds good. I kind of wanted to save these to the end, but I just can't stand it. <laughs> Show me these lockers. This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got these from uh, Metals Recycling. And, uh, you know, being that I worked in a school and this is a former school bus, we thought it would be kind of a, kind, not that one. No, we thought it would be kind of a neat idea to just go ahead and, uh, and paint these and use them as, uh, we just mounted them like this. And obviously you get the curve of the, of the bus in the back and you're a little bit limited on the space, but it's open from one end to the other. Did you have dividers in between the doors and you just made it one big no, channel? No, there, there were no dividers, I'm grateful for that. Yeah, I, I took the box apart that it originally had and we just kind of kept the face and had to figure out a way to attach it top and bottom. Uh, but, you know, again, Donna was supportive of the idea. She liked it, thought it was kind of, kind of, uh, you know, that it, that it worked. And, you know, we went with the ruler up there and and one on the other side too. But yeah, it's a little unique. We've never seen it before and uh, we've gotten a lot of comments on it. Is this a propane it stove is. and oven? It it's an LP gas uh, propane uh, camp stove. It's an apartment size, so it's only 20 inches wide. We picked this up uh, again off Craigslist for 50 bucks uh, from a camp. They were renovating this, this camp down in the Burlington area of Vermont. It works great. For folks that don't know, what is a Home Depot uh, kitchen build? What is that? Well, basically all of our components came from Home Depot or, uh, or you can get them from Lowe's or whatever, big box uh, construction store, as opposed to me uh, custom building all the cabinets, which I could have done, but would have also taken so much longer for me to do. It was just an easier way to go. I'm pretty happy with the way they came out. Donna 
uh, stained them all and uh, painted the knobs uh, a color that she liked. And uh, this uh, countertop, this uh, Formica countertop is the exact same one we had in our last home that we, uh, that we sold. So it's funny, she went in there and, and said, yep, that countertop, which is, any husband is so happy when his wife goes in and says, yep, that's it, I bought that one, as opposed to, no, let's look at a right. hundred different samples. <laughs> she was, uh, she was great about that. We try keep it simple and low yeah. budget. We don't try and put a lot of money into cabinets and sinks. I mean, the sink was free. He found the sink and he refurbished it, cleaned it up. And as many people know, when you live in a schoolie, a lot of us don't have a bathroom sink. So we need a decent sink in the kitchen. Right, right, it does double duty. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, it came out great. Sure let's uh, let's move on. Let's take a look at the rest. We ended up with uh, this unique 12-volt uh, uh, refrigerator. So it's kind of cool. It just runs right straight off our batteries. I wish I'd checked out how many amps it takes. I think it's, what, four and a half amps. Uh, amp hour is pretty, pretty low. And it works pretty good. It gives us a, a lot of space. Let me just go ahead and show you inside here. We originally were going to go with uh, the chest type of refrigerator freezers. Yeah. We were going to get two of them. Uh, we bought one and found that it was a little bit, uh, a little bit small, and it probably wouldn't have worked out. Donna found this through Costco, and we picked it up. I think it was around eleven hundred, twelve hundred bucks, maybe total. Just over a thousand. Yeah, just over a thousand bucks, and it's I'm I'm really Another happy with it. compromise. I'm really happy with it. I put a little desk down here, a little fold down desk. This was my uh, uh, my uh, answer to not having a dinette or a flat surface, but pretty much all we use it for is to put stuff on. <laughs> My so, sewing table. Oh, your sewing that. table, exactly. That's true. <laughs> the dude abides. That's pretty, pretty simple. Yeah, the dude, yeah, there you go, big Lebowski, right? Uh, let me just show you this here real quick. Donna had this idea, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, we just put a curtain here to just kind of separate the sleeping and bathroom area from the, from the rest of the house right there. So it's kind of nice. She gets up in the morning and uh, she can make coffee and do whatever she's doing. Uh, this shower was given to us uh, for free. Yeah. And again, I wasn't gonna go with a full 36 inch fiberglass form shower, but it was given to us. Uh, we installed it. Uh, it was fun to get in here, I'll tell you that. It was uh, difficult to get in the back door, but we're pretty grateful we have it now. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been nice to have. How and are it, we heating sure. our water for that? Uh, we've got an on-demand hot water heater right here. It's a uh, Camplux. And that uh, provides hot water, obviously, to our kitchen sink as well. How many gallons of fresh water are we carrying on board? Uh, we've got 84 uh, total capacity. We have two 42-gallon tanks under my side of the bed over here. And uh, so far, it's been adequate. We went, what, like 13 days, on when we were first here? Before we had to go down and refill. Uh, so we're, we're careful with water. That's one of the things we've had to learn about being here in the desert. What's going on with this uh, toilet you got? Well, it looks like uh, a regular toilet, but it looks, looks good innocent to be enough. Deceiving. Exactly. <laughs> you know, everybody uses a toilet, uh, whether we want to talk about it or not. But basically, this is just a regular uh, toilet seat on top of a uh, a tote. The tote is double lined with a bag, and we've got some cedar chips in there. Uh, we purchased a urine diverter, I think, off of eBay, and I think that's kind of important to be able to separate your your urine from your solid waste. I think it just uh, helps to keep things from, from really getting foul in there. Is that a special, is that a trash can or is that a special container? It's just a regular tote. I think we got from uh, Ocean State Job Lots or Walmart. I'm not sure. I just cut it to you, fit. You just cut it with a razor knife? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Cut it with that way. Uh, it's the uh, diverter is plumbed right down to uh, our pipe, which feeds into our gray tank. And uh, you know, when it starts to get objectionable, there, uh, after uh, you know, whatever, a couple, three days, we'll pull the bag, throw it in with our trash, and throw it away just like you would a baby's diaper. This is uh, her, hers and his, <laughs> as far as uh, toiletries go. We're kind of hanging it, so you've got a way to conserve the room in here. You got it. So I'm That's not great smacking idea. my head every time mm. I turn around. Um, we've also um, uh, got a sticker wall in here. We're kind of collecting stickers as we go. Oh man, I should have yeah. brought a sticker. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> Yeah. Tell me about this wood. This is beautiful. It must cost you a fortune. Well, thank you very much. And uh, you know, uh, it actually didn't cost us much at all. Just just for the price of being able to collect pallets over the course of uh, 
a really a few years, I guess, we, knowing we this is the way we wanted to finish it. We collect pallets with uh, with hardwood. We've got uh, some white oak here. I don't know what species that is. It might be maple or beech, and we've got some more oak. We've got some red oak in there. And anyway, I was just really tickled about finishing it uh, this way. I think it came out okay. And uh, I think it came out fabulous. Yeah. Is that water-based uh, polyurethane? Uh, I, I think it is. Yeah, I think that is a water-based polyurethane. And, and how many coats is that are we uh, looking at? There's probably two on this right here. There's certain areas, uh, maybe that's three, but there's other areas where we put on a little more like on our table. Two or three coats. If somebody wanted to duplicate this look, would that was that a semi-satin finish or was it a uh, It was. It was a satin finish. Exactly. Okay. So yeah. that's what you get with the satin finish, mm -hmm. rough cut. He didn't sand it down, which I really like that he didn't come back and sand it down smooth. It just, it's a rustic look and it came out great and it's all salvaged pallets. How do you beat that? Yeah. Especially with lumber prices, what they are right now. That's right. That's right. Yeah, thank you, Jamie. Building these uh, these cubbies and everything, we're working around a wheel well here on both sides. So that, that of course, uh, is, is something you have to think about when you're doing your layout. But uh, cubbies on this side, had a couple over here. We've got our clothing cubbies in here. Uh, again, a his and hers uh, for that. So we've got space there. Finished up with some more oak trim. We've got a shelf that kind of surrounds the whole uh, bedroom area here. And that's a king size bed in case people are wondering, two twins. Oh, that's great. Yep. And you've got lights over here. Did you, uh, you do. are they on a dimmer switch? They are on a dimmer switch. Uh, she insisted and I'm glad she did. <laughs> I'm yeah. a big fan of the dimmer. Oh, yeah. It, I am a big fan of yeah. the dimmer. It would have been way too intense in a bedroom uh, to have that light. It's pretty bright. So the dimmer switch makes it nice if you just need to go in there and grab something real quick and get out without blinding the other person. How many BTUs is your, is your AC? That's just a, a home window unit. It's a 5,000 BTU unit. Uh, thankfully, we haven't had to use it yet. I know it works, but uh, we, we want to try to avoid using it if we, if we can. But if we have it, we need it just to keep this area... Cool. And, and you've got your generator. These we do. are the, the doors he built. He's not. He says he's not a carpenter, but they're beautiful, beautiful. And we used all scrap wood. He used all scrap wood for the back, and we just stained it. Very inexpensive. Yep. It's in her closet. Well, thanks, son. Yeah, he's not doing a very good job of convincing us that he's not a carpenter. <laughs> yeah. And then I have a full pantry. And in her full pantry here. Yeah. Got your little remote storage, your little yeah, pockets for things. Yeah, my laptop. So yeah. I can work on some pictures and then some antennas. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to, to highlight on before we go outside and take a look at your trailer and your side-by-side? -side? I don't know, Jamie. I think you covered it uh, pretty well. I, I think it's just we've got laminate floors. Uh, you know, we stripped it, right, stripped it right down to the metal, redid all the metal, sanded it, painted it, and came right back up with uh, just a few layers of a very thin foam just to make a thermal break between the metal and the finished floor. It's warm, it's comfortable. We heat it with a with a Mr. Buddy heater. And next thing you know, you're doing something you didn't think you could do and it, and it really ends up coming out great. So you put it together in a very original way. Yeah, well, thank you. Choose I'll pretend like I love my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, got something out of this tour. Thank just you. meeting Paul and Donna, they're very interesting and we really appreciate you taking time with us today. Okay, thank Jamie, you. thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Right? Was that not awesome or what? Those guys are great. Let's keep the party going. I've got a video that I did of Ron Moak recently that's very similar to this. Ron has been uh, living the traveling lifestyle for some time. He's been through a few vans. He built this himself. It's, there's some great ideas in it. I think you're really gonna like it. That video is up here and that I've also put a playlist together of my 10 best. I've been shooting videos now for seven years and I distilled my seven best van life, bus life videos down into this playlist that you'll see right here. Give that a look and thanks for watching. See you soon.